I took up powerlifting two years ago when my best friend challenged me to joining the three, four, five club. 300 pound bench press, 400 pound squat, and 500 pound deadlift. I also did this because part of getting older means losing muscle. And I want to be able to squat, walk, pick up my great grandchildren if I get to 80 or 90. Now, the three for a five club is probably a bit extreme, but the concept of preparing for your older self isn't. So I often have a conversation with my 88 year old self and ask him what he wished I was doing now to help him. Because the one thing we know for sure is early detection matters. I think we should all start having conversations with our older selves. I mean, if 50% of us are going to die of cancer and heart disease, let's get them in on our decision making now. Because the three reasons I'm hearing for not acting are no family history, no symptoms, no time, and our 88-year-old selves have no patience for our excuses. I see and treat people with life-limiting diagnoses and reduce people's risk of cancer occurrence. It's my love for clinical medicine and fascination with the advancements in cancer care that lead me to get involved in clinical trials. There, I get to see firsthand how we bring novel treatments to patients. Amidst this high-paced world of clinical medicine and research, I connect the dots and recognize a neglected, high-impact area in a patient's journey. I see the trillions of dollars we spend on incredible medical advances, but what are we doing to stop or delay disease before it starts? Are we employing the same efforts we're applying to drug development as we are to disease prevention? Despite all our advances in medicine, the average number of years you can expect to live in full health is 66. We call this your health span. Now, I know you've heard of lifespan, but we're talking about health span, the number of years you're healthy, not just alive. Sure, we've made some pretty great advances in lifespan over the past century. It's currently 82, but this has also come at a cost. Many of us can expect to go on to develop age-related diseases like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and dementia. What if you wanted more healthy years? Could it be possible? In the cancer clinic, I commonly get asked, what else can I do to improve my odds? Should I take up intermittent fasting? What dietary changes should I make? The enthusiasm and motivation to do everything and anything possible to improve the odds is palpable. I want to tap into that and move it to a place where the impact is high. Because when are diseases like cancer and heart disease most treatable? Before it starts, or if it's detected early. So let's get intentional about our future selves. This takes work, because the current system isn't giving you a lot of attention when you're healthy. Let's start with cancer. One in two will be diagnosed. Most people don't present with signs or symptoms until later stages, where a cancer can be more challenging to treat. This is why screening before symptoms matters. 
It saves lives. While completing my training in oncology, my dad gets diagnosed with colon cancer. It's been eight years, and he's still alive. The single most important reason why I have my dad, my kids, have a grandfather is because his cancer is detected early. If we hadn't advocated for a screening colonoscopy, things could have been very different. Stage one colon cancers have a greater than 90% chance of cure. And interestingly, his story doesn't stop there. Some cancers are genetically linked. And my dad's DNA shows a mutation, Lynch syndrome, that dramatically increases your chance of getting colon cancer. The downstream effect is his family gets tested. And those with Lynch syndrome can now undergo more aggressive screening. Early detection matters. About one in eight women will develop breast cancer. But screening mammograms reduce the chance of dying from breast cancer by 40%. My dad's screening colonoscopy dramatically improved his chances of surviving colon cancer. And the same could be said for everyone out there with a colon. <laughs> That's all of us. My wife is in excellent health, but she has elevated cholesterol and an elevated lipoprotein little a. Lipoprotein little a is a type of cholesterol molecule that has a greater chance of sticking to the arteries. 15 to 20% of people have it. Advocating for her to get her lipids checked and act now is the type of action I'm calling for. It's the type of action her 88-year-old self wants her to take now. I've seen the impact we can have through medical optimization, prevention, and screening. My passion is for prevention, to change our response to disease from reactive to proactive. Looking at our older selves is insightful. Medical science is telling us the odds, but it's also telling us what we can do. You have some agency over your mortality. Your health span matters. And I think that this approach just isn't discussed enough in today's healthcare landscape. I want to change that, starting now. Come with me now to a new initiative I'm working on. Have you heard of prehab? I know you've heard of rehab, an intervention or approach to better help you recover. But what about prehab? Prehab is an intervention or approach to better help you prepare for treatment. There's a prehab program where we get patients prior to cancer treatment or surgery to undergo an individualized exercise and movement strategy. What's fascinating is the data around prehab. Those who are undergoing prehab have less complications and less toxicity while undergoing treatment. Those hospitalized for surgery spend fewer days in hospital in the prehab group. If you or someone you love has ever been dealt a major diagnosis, then you know that waiting can be the hardest part. Waiting for treatment or surgery can be paralyzing, debilitating even. This is when prehab becomes a crucial component to helping improve your odds for a better outcome. It's about waiting with purpose. Join me on this paradigm shift, a reprioritization of our health, we got to be intentional about it, proactive rather than reactive. And to be proactive, you need a plan. And that plan 
starts with the honest and candid conversation you can have today with your 88-year-old self. Because how we die is so much about the choices we make while we're still alive. Thank you. Thank you.